Jalen Incorporated brings you this preview of Homecoming 2011 as North Carolina Central takes on Bethune-Cookman for the third time in program history. Eagles looking to end a losing streak coming into this ball game as they take on the mighty Wildcats. Coach, again, we always look back at that last ball game, that first question, and again for the second time since we've gone to Hampton it's been a well of a ball game unfortunately we were uh, again on the the short end of the stick there lost 30 to 27 but it, it was an, another one of those efforts by this team fourth quarter lead had to come back late Michael Johnson made another fourth quarter drive I mean it was a very dramatic ball game it was it was it was a good college football game and like you said you know, we're continuously coming up short and something's gonna have to give you know we're gonna keep on fighting we're gonna keep on working hard but uh, that, you know, I just hated the way that football game had to end. Yeah, it was it was not a a great way to end a football game, especially with all the penalties and 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 not trying to get you a Kyle Serba fine or a fine by the MEAC, But it, it's tough to see a game end that way because both teams play their absolute hearts out. They did, they did, and you know it came down to to it was a fumble, and it's clear on our film that Mark Lewis recovered the fumble, curled up and go on the ground, and the umpire came in. And he pointed our ball. And once that happened, you know, we erupted. We thought we had our first conference win. And, and, and then to find out about 30 seconds later that they gave the ball back to Hampton, you know, it was very, very disappointing, you know. And then, you know, there were other questionable calls in the ball game that, you know, that, 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 that needs some clarity. But, again, we, we can't sit around and, and cry about it. It happened. We lost the ball game. But, but as a football program, we can't let the, the game come down to a call here and a call there. You know, there are opportunities that we had to, to put this team away that we didn't take advantage of. And then we're still committing too many penalties and, and, and turnovers. And, and we and the turnovers, when you commit a lot of turnovers, you're going to lose football games. And we had a couple errant snaps and we had a fumble that they just snatched out of our players' hand. That, that we, we just can't make those turnovers. And if we, if we don't make those plays, then I think it wouldn't even come down to an overtime. We would have won the ball game. And that's tough to swallow, especially with your first season here at North Carolina Central. You want to obviously want to get uh, some wins to, to create some confidence with your team. But I really think at this point they're still buying into what you're doing. Good things that did come out of the ball game against Hampton. We got to see Adrius Augustus get, a, get the load of the carries over 100 yards, scored a touchdown, a big touchdown to give us the lead in the fourth quarter. And then you got to see a player like Rashard Daniels have a good game. You got to see a player like Demario Lackey have a good game. Jonathan Nicely, his first two touchdown game at North Carolina Central. Defense made numerous stops. So there was still a lot of good that came out of that contest. Oh, yeah. And then, then you got to throw Charles Goodwin in there. His first college start at left tackle, and I thought he held his own. He did extremely well. And uh, hopefully we can get the big fella, John Drew, healthy. He hurt his ankle. But that's the John Drew I've been hearing about. He was able to dominate in the middle of the line of scrimmage and make some plays. So, you know, there were some good things out there that, that hopefully we can build on there for this week because we're going to need those guys' efforts and we're going to need them to dig a little deeper and give us a better effort if we want to compete uh, against a team like Bethune-Cookman. You bring up today's opponent, Bethune-Cookman. They're a team that everybody talks about being loaded, and, and, and they certainly are. They've had some struggles this year, losing two ball games, South Carolina State, and North Carolina and T in the league, but they're still a very dangerous opponent. They're still in the thick of things as far as the MEAC title race. Yeah, they got two conference losses, and and, and everyone seems to think two losses is going to win this uh, going to win this race. So if they went out and get some help, then they, they they're thinking that they're going to have a shot at winning winning the conference championship and getting back to the playoffs. So we know we're going to have a very focused a very determined football uh, team that comes in here at, at our stadium and it's going to be up you know up to, up to us to match that intensity and, and that's what we have to do we have to put together back to back games where we play good you know we've been on a roller coaster all season good one week bad the next you know for us to hold four fourth quarter leads and not come away with victories i mean you know that's showing that we're in ball games if you throw morgan state game out you know all the other games you know, we were right there in those ball games. So it's one of those situations where if we made up in our minds that we're, that we're going to practice hard, you know, have a good practice all week and, and come out and compete. And if we if we made up in our mind that we're going to do those things, we're going to have a solid game plan to go at Bethune-Cookman. When you look at Bethune-Cookman and the challenges they bring to us, what, what are some things that, that, that you, you know, going to look at to maybe go after them as far as what you see you can do with them and, and then vice versa? What can they do to us? Well, I tell you, uh, you know, we're going to just, first of all, we got to try to protect our quarterback. You know, the first thing that comes to mind is number 49. That guy is the real deal. You know, he, he's an NFL football player written all over him. You know, I'm, I'm thinking he's going to be a draft pick. I'm not, not no free agent. He'll be a draft pick. 
you know, and they do an excellent job of moving him around. Uh, DN linebacker, and he come from depth, and and uh, he he is the real. He's probably the best football player that we're going defensive football player that we're gonna see all season long, and uh, he's good. So that's number one for us. What we got to try to do is stop him. And then on defense, we got to try to stop the run. You know, they're a physical team up front. They're gonna run the ball right at you, and then if you try to put too many in the box, they're gonna throw that thing up the air to number three. And that kid, is a, he's an excellent receiver. You know, he's one of those receivers that when the ball is in the air, he thinks it's his ball, and he's going after it. So, you know, Coach Jink is a, is a very emotional, you know, uh, football coach I've known for quite a few years, and, 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 and his team takes on his personality. And, and I know we better be ready to play because that, that's an excellent football team coming in here. Coach, it's your first homecoming here at North Carolina Central. It's always a festive week at, at, at most in every HBCU. Uh, what makes homecoming special in your mind? Well, it's, it's an opportunity for a lot of the fans and alum to come back. You know, from, from a football standpoint, this is probably the one game that, that most of our fans and alums going to get a chance to see us play. And we want to put on a, a performance where they can be proud of us. You know, one in six is not, you know, I'm not a very proudful record. You know, so we want to give these guys – all our fans and an opportunity to show that we're still fighting as a football program and, and we want to make them proud we really do I mean that, that's the, that's the way I look at at homecomings and and you know I didn't have no say in scheduling but through Cookman for homecoming the conference champions it kind of fell on uh, Founders Day but man you know that's tough to First year in the conference, you schedule the defending champions as your homecoming opponent. So, you know, but it is what it is. You know, they'll be up here ready to play, and uh, and, and we we're gonna be ready to play this game because we haven't been very good at home this year, and that, and that that really really upsets me that that we haven't been able to to show our home fans that that we're a good team. So, so I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure we come out there and just just give a maximum effort, you know, at, at home. Hopefully that's the case, Coach. Thanks for your time. Best of luck this week against Bethune-Cookman homecoming. Thank you. That's head coach Henry Frazier III. As always, Gion Incorporated brings you this preview of North Carolina Central and Bethune-Cookman. Enjoy homecoming.